All right, so we got why Jack Hatai Khan is the most underrated Primark. If I said his name right, then you know I'm kind of a goat. But if I said it wrong, we're just gonna ignore that. Let's go to the video. Well, GW did a pretty good job of making each and every Primark unique and interesting. I Their agree. Style, abilities, strengths, weaknesses, and I agree. weapon of choice varies from Primark to Primark. However, some have definitely gotten more love than others. If Ferris didn't True. have iron hands, then I probably wouldn't even remember his name. One Primark <laughs> that flies under the radar yet is actually really awesome is Jagadai Khan, Primark of the White Skies. Yeah. While some people just call him a space Mongolian with a hard on for jet bikes, he's a lot more than that. He is extremely reasonable and witty, making very clear decisions based on effective, sensible thought processes. Oh. He also delivers the greatest burns out of all the Primarchs by far. As such, some of the best one-liners in all of 40k come from Jagadai. Before we get started, okay. using protection is incredibly important, whether it be when you're fighting on the front lines of Ukraine, yeah, spending yeah, 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 the night with a bush up. pig, or Hold browsing up. the internet. See. For the internet, which is the most dangerous of the three, but yeah, listen, a VPN I heard is a lot, I think he's in an ad right now. But yeah, I heard a lot about, um, about the White Scars Primark. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this guy's name, Jack Hatai. Um, but yeah, I heard a lot about him. And, and, um, a lot of people actually in the comments wanted me you know, to react to like his, a kind of like no his VPN lore and stuff like that. Like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. Why not? First of all, thank you guys so much for all the support over the past few weeks. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you guys so much. It really means a lot, man, because I've been wanting to know this you know, type of support for a long time. I've been doing YouTube, you know, kind of a long time. You literally can't lose by giving it a go. Cheers to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the highlights of the legendary Jagadai Khan. Jagadai, Jagadai, okay. a boss-ass Primark. Okay. I'll also talk about why people don't seem to rate him that highly, despite his quality. Let's get into it. Let's get into it! First things first, why isn't Jagadai very popular? Why are some people always surprised when they find out he's actually a fucking legend? Well, it comes down to the fundamental problem of the White Scars not being that popular, and by extension, Jagadai suffers. After all, if you get Blood Angels and get invested in your army and color scheme, Sanguinius will probably end up being your favorite Primarch. The White Scars, however, are white. Well, not completely, but their armor is, and painting white armor is a bitch if you don't know the special techniques to make it look good. As oh, okay. such, new players don't want to touch that shit, so they go for paint schemes that don't make you want to crush your own balls with a hammer, because the mm. white scar white you bought from GW was already completely fucked and unusable before you had even opened it for the first time. Wait, so like, it, okay. I know it doesn't always come down to like the, you know, to like the color scheme and stuff like that uh of like the legion but i didn't know like it was that important i didn't know that like the that the color scheme uh of a legion was that was that important to like some legions and stuff like that i didn't know that wow okay 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 another reason could just be the general lack of interest in ancient mongolia by western audiences Ooh, okay ancient roman greece are dope as are medieval inspired legions. So it's no wonder that the Dark Angels, Ultramarines, and Blood Angels are up there. So my hypothesis okay. is difficult to paint models combined with knights being cooler than Mongolians has led to okay, a lot that, of that kind of makes sense. I'm gonna be honest with you. results in a lack of interest for Jagadai. But here's why Jagadai is actually a fucking beast. Even before he crash landed on his world of Chagoras and discovered the speed, he was special, even more so than his brothers. See, the worlds each Primarch landed on wasn't random. It was tailored towards them. Whilst Jagadai's planet seemed perfect... Wait, what? Wait, so when all the Primarchs got, like, like shipped to each world, what, like, they were meant to be at that world? I thought they was just, just, just like, um, like, eight ball pool. How, like, you just knock one into everybody else and they all just spread out. I thought it was like that. I didn't know that, like, they were actually, like, meant to like go to the world that they were actually meant to be i did not know that at all hmm wowzers for him after all it was very mongolian it was not the planet he was supposed to arrive at the eldar laughing god sir gorach swapped jagadai <laughs> chitty chin chin planet so that jagadai would remain loyalist and fulgrim would be the one to fall to chaos <laughs> originally fulgrim was supposed to remain loyal which is why the emperor gave him so many honors and was oh. genuinely surprised when he became a traitor after all you don't call the legion that will end up being a bunch of drug addicted super rapists the emperor's children if you know how things are going to turn out on the flip side of that the emperor was deeply sus of jagadai and was surprised that he turned out to be such a steadfast loyalist why would sir gorach do this 
Well, he doesn't really need a reason. He's a literal fucking clown god of memes. However, Jagadai was last seen chasing Dark Elder into the webway. Okay. Sia Gorach lives in the webway. It's highly likely that Sia Gorach is the one who currently holds Jagadai and is using him to further his own cause. What? On top of that, the Emperor's children have not been a very effective traitor legion and didn't do much to further the traitor's cause during the Horus Heresy. Wait, so he's caught? Example, Fulgrim tried to kill Perthorabo, who was the traitor's MVP, and the Empress' children got bored of the Siege of Terror and just started terrorizing civilians. On the flip side, Jagadai was able to counter and even banish Mortarion, who was the traitor's other MVP, whilst these White Scars fought hard to protect the Imperium. Oh. So oh, so like, bro, he was taking out the heavy hitters. Okay, 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 Jagadai, okay. Perhaps a traitor White Scar Legion versus a Loyalist Empress Children Legion could have resulted in the heresy going worse for the Imperium, maybe even a chaos victory. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. When Jagadai crash landed on his world, he wasn't horny for glory and recognition. He was content with his tribe and only acted when his adoptive father was murdered by a rival tribe. Ooh. Jagadai entered rage mode, which he does sometimes, fair enough, and he massacred the rival tribe, killing not just the men, but the women and children as well. Instead of then becoming Darth Vader, Jagadai had a quick breather and decided that tribes massacring each other was stupid. Bro, bro crashed out. That man crashed out. Took the men, the women. Bro, he took everybody. He took everybody out. He crashed out. And then, bro, he was like, hmm. You know what, man? Maybe we should all just stop fighting. That's crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, listen, I don't blame him, you know, for going crazy or whatever. But, like, bro, you don't have to do that to, to everybody else, man. That's crazy. So he conquered each tribe and united them into a mighty force. On the other side of the planet, there was the Palantine, a more advanced, less Mongolian society that was threatened by the rising Mongol menace. The Palatine is most likely what Fulgrim would have been adopted into if he had landed on Chagoris as intended. Now once again, Jagadai didn't have ambitions to conquer the world and make the Palantine his bitch. But when they attacked him and he killed them, it was on. After a couple years, Jagadai had beaten them in their entirety and was now the Khan of Khans, Lord of Chagoris. Then oh, the Big E snap. arrived and was like, you have two options. Either join my crusade and conquer the galaxy for mankind or, you know, control alt delete. Now you might think that Jagadai would have jumped at the chance to sail the stars and conquer distant worlds. However, he saw the Emperor as a tyrant and he wasn't too happy that he would go from the Khan of Khans to a living weapon wielded by another. Oh. But he did agree with the Emperor in a number of points and he also knew that to refuse was to die. So there was really no point in yeah, doing there was, that. Yeah, there was no so choice. So Jagadai had the most sensible approach to the Emperor out of all the Primarchs. He graciously accepted his offer and negotiated a deal so that Chagoras would maintain its culture and not just get turned into a polluted wasteland that was stripped of all its natural resources. Okay. When you compare this to Fulgrim and Perturabo crying and groveling before the Emperor, or Lorga holding a massive religious holiday, it really frames how sensible the Khan is. He knew no wasn't an answer, so he got the best version of yes. He got a deal, yeah, he got a deal out From of it. From there, the Khan didn't have it easy. Most legions were intact and united when they found their Primarch. As such, normally a Primarch just had to do like a two-week boat license course and bam, their <laughs> legion was theirs. The White Scars, on the other hand, acted as scouts and vanguard forces. Hence, 50,000 sons of Jagadai were scattered around the galaxy in small groups. Jagadai had to recall his legion, which was not even remotely united, and then integrate them all within the culture of Chagoras to make them brothers. Oh. This took about a decade of waiting and working. By the end of it, the White Scars had been born anew and were ready to absolutely send it. Uh -oh. So that's Jagadai's badass origins. Instead of now just retelling his lore like a wiki page, I'm going to go through his various highlights so that by the end of this video, you appreciate him just as much as I do. Okay. And actually see him as arguably the most human and relatable out of all the primes. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, Major Kill, we love you over here, but nah. We all know that the, that the Salamander's Primarch, that's the most reasonable human-like person, okay? You know, hey, 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 I'm, I'll be real. Listen, I'm not gonna lie to you. Listen, this Khan, bro, this guy, bro, he's cool. I understand that. You know, he, he's one of those type of people, bro, that, that try to make the best of what it is, you know? Even though for some, you know, for some things, he can't really control everything. Bro, he, listen, and guess what? He may be a crash out. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, major kill. He cannot. No, 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 no. No, no, take that back. He can't be the most human. Bro, bro, he took out the men... The, the, the kids and the girls and the women. What is he? No, 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 no. He is not the most human. The salamanders would literally never. But to be honest with you, 
This guy, bro, he actually sounds kind of cool. I'll admit that. Bucks. As a part of joining the crusade, each Primarch is given a special big-ass spaceship by the Mechanicum, made on Mars itself. When Jagadai was inspecting his nearly complete flagship that the tech priest he was with was complimenting and talking about how special it was, Jagadai turns to the Marzi boy and he is like, this is fucking dog shit. You will rebuild it from scratch with the specifications and modifications I give you. What? I want the speed. It was a fun moment as Mars was expecting Jagadai to suck their robococks for the ship, but oh. instead they had to remake it. Oh, snap. Jagadai is a legendary swords master, arguably one of the best Primarch duelists. One of his Primarch powers is the inability to ever feel fatigue or tiredness. The only time he does is when there is warp fuckery affecting him. He can also oh. access the speed force and go super sane in time. Bro, he got like unlimited For endurance. Example, when some orcs killed a few white scar sons of his, he went rage death whirlwind mode and literally turned into a blender. He, he kind of like reminds me of like Kratos a little bit. I don't know why. He's like a Mongolian Kratos. Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Literally did the fucking Blade Master ultimate ability from Warcraft 3. He was killing the orcs so ruthlessly and quickly that they actually started to shit themselves. This is a pretty big deal, as orcs rarely ever retreat or lose morale. They don't fear death. In melee combat, this is even more pronounced. But you bet your ass those orcs shut the bed and tried to run, only to become a plate of fungal sashimi soon after. Despite his prowess, Jagadai would never brag or exaggerate his exploits. His oh. legion's tactics were efficient and effective. However, due to their culture, many saw them as savages, putting them in the same undisciplined category as the Space Wolves or even the World Eaters. Jagadai was happy to let them believe this, but it did hurt his feelings because of how many brothers looked down on him as lesser. Mm. A positive result of this is that we were presented with the slickest burn, or burns because there was more than one, that Warhammer has ever given us. After the triumph of Ulanor, where Horus was chosen as War Master, Fulgrim decides to have a go at Jagadai, making subtle insults to his culture and goals before saying, I heard you do strange things to your ships. To which Jagadai replied, I heard you do strange things to your warriors. Get wrecked, Fulgrim. Now he was up. Wop, 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 wop. Oh my goodness. I can't lie to you. Yo, yo, yo. If I'm, uh, what's his name? Fulcrum or whatever, bro. I can't lie to you, bro. I'm pulling you to the side, bro. You got to run out 30 seconds. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, first of all, I'll never be like this minutes right here. But listen, I'm, I, I can't lie to you. If I'm Fulcrum, bro, I'm going to be real, bro. We got to run out. You know what? Forget 30 seconds. We got to run, uh, run a minute, bro. A minute slap boxing or something, bro. Something got to give. Especially talking about the rumors that Fulgrim had allowed Fabius to experiment with augmenting some of the Emperor's children, but it's still funny to imagine he meant that Fulgrim was incest sodomizing his sons. Fulgrim got pretty pissed, but he gets better. Sanguinius wonders out loud who would win in a duel, uh -oh. and Fulgrim insults the Khan again. The Khan then tears Fulgrim a new asshole, calling him arrogant and boastful before declaring he would easily beat Fulgrim. Fulgrim is about to rage and almost draws his sword uh -oh. before Sanguinius calms things down as he usually does. When the heresy broke out, Jagadai was in a bit of a weird spot. He hadn't directly seen betrayal or who was in the wrong. He also received a shitload of conflicting astropathic messages, so he decided he would uncover what was going on before choosing a side. He went to Prospero to speak with a shard of Magnus. He encountered and fought Materian, who tried to convince Jagadai to join the traitors, and he even put down a rebellion within his own legion between the traitors and the loyalists. Oh, snap. After he found out what was actually happening and how Chaos was involved, he was like, Father isn't perfect. He can be a hypocritical asshole tyrant that uses and abuses those that serve him. But you guys are literally the commanders of the forces of hell. Your victory is mass death and suffering for eternity. An asshole dad is nothing compared to the malice of chaos. As such, Jagadai made the relatively easy decision to reject chaos and fight for the Imperium. Nice. It doesn't really seem like much, but if all the other Primarchs had stopped to follow a similar chain of critical thinking, then maybe the apocalypse wouldn't have occurred. During the Siege True. of Terror, Jagadai's humanity shone through. When the traders were attacking and civilians were getting slaughtered, Jagadai couldn't stand by and he wanted to leave the palace to save some of them. Dawn was like, fuck no dude, come on. But Jagadai <laughs> asked Sanguinius if he would save lives. Sanguinius told him he would save many. Armed with that knowledge, the Khan went forth. Once again, this was a pretty reasonable decision. He knew that what he would do would save innocence. If Sanguinius had been like, no, it's a trap, you'll die, the Khan would have been like, all right, no worries, I'll stay here. <laughs> Later down the track to help save the palace, the Khan engaged the significantly more powerful Mortarian in combat. Now, Morty is a bit of a counter for the Khan. Whilst Khan lands more blows, Morty is too tanky, and his aura slowly drains those around him. Ooh. So Khan was getting exhausted and clobbered. 
Despite this, he was still able to tell Morty that Sanguinius had nicer wings than him, so it's good to see the burn factor never left. The <laughs> amount of roasts in this one duel was on another level. When Morty landed a killing blow, Jagadai slipped past his guard and made it a two for one deal. Morty is banished and Jagadai dies, but like, he'll be fine. He was sent off to Malkador to get a recovery massage. Oh, okay. Whether it be his desire for freedom, his strong moral code, bro, his ate, ate, he ate a sensual bean. Thinking, his wicked skills with a blade, or his unbelievable wit <laughs> when it comes to roasting kids, Jagadai is a legendary Primark, one of the best, and it's important that he gets recognized as such. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support Man, shout out to Major Kill for this, man. Look, I'm going to be like, listen. First of all, bro, this man Major Kill, he comes, even though, you know, he's very, you know, vulgar. Um, he still come through and, and explain all this, you know, in a nice way. So I, you know, shout out to the major kill, man. Um, but yeah, man, like we finally learned some, well, I finally learned some things about Jagged Eye, man. Shout out to everybody, you know, who's literally been spamming in the comments, you know, oh, bro, 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 Jagged Eye, bro, do the Jagged Eye video, Jagged Eye video. I was like, you know what, bro, I got you, man, I got you. So shout out to all you guys, you know, that's been watching, man. Comment down below, man, what you guys think about this? Um, and of course, you know, I knew who like this Primark was, just like, I never really knew much about him. Uh, I knew he was like, uh, the only thing I knew about him was like, he was Mongolian. That was it. Other than that, obviously, we all know the Salamanders are literally, you know, the best faction uh, in, in like any entire series. So I just wanted to say that. Make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. And I will see you guys at the next time out. And peace out, y'all.